Now is the turn of uh, Claudia Claudia Perez Barrancos, who is right there. Uh, Claudia is a PhD student at the Spanish Institute of Oceanography. She's uh, graduated uh, in marine science and holds an inter-university uh, master's degree in oceanography from the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. Her research uh, line focuses on the role of microbes in the storage of dissolved organic matter in deep ocean which is also related with, uh, to uh, larger climate processes. She has also participated in many studies about the response of marine microbial communities to uh, several physical chemical perturbations in uh, surface of ocean, such as that deposition, uh, mesoscale structures, and currently hydrothermal inputs. I hope I said it correctly. So the title of uh, her talk today is Experimental Evidence of Hydrothermal Vent Fluids uh, Fueling Microbes at the Submarine Volcano Tagore. So, Claudia. Okay, thank you, Anna. I need to check that everything works. Okay, so first, uh, Thank you, Eugenio, for the opportunity of sharing this work that we are currently developing and which we expect would answer one of the many questions that arose after the birth of the Tagore submarine volcano, which is, um, is it thriving, marine microbes? So without further ado, let's start from the beginning. Uh, as my colleagues already said, in summer 2011, an intense episode of seismic activity in El Hierro uh, resulted in an eruption at the south of the island um, and gave rise to a new shallow submarine. Uh, the birth of this new underworld volcano called Tagoro uh, produced a large plume of vent material detectable from space uh, and that led to abrupt changes in the physical and chemical conditions of the water column. So, um, the discharge of high temperature uh, hydrothermal fluids, magmatic gases, and volcanic uh, particles uh, resulted in the warmer of the water column. Um, also, the oxidation of ion reduces species of sulfur and manganese produced oxygen depletion as well as acidification. So, it is fair to say that at that time, uh, the waters around uh, the Tagore volcano uh, were almost completely devoid of what we know as a suitable conditions for living organisms. Indeed, scientists uh, uh, showed that, that a small phytoplankton abundance decreased, while heterotrophic prokaryotes were more abundant and active during this eruptive uh, process. So after about two months after this eruption, the hydrographic conditions returned to normal, and that led us to the current degassing phase. So um, after March 2012, the Tagoro entered an, high, an active hydrothermal phase, which involved the release of heat, gases, metals, and nutrients from different, um, from multiple vents dispersed around the cone, uh, around the main cone, as Juan Pablo just showed us. Um, in the present, Tagoro uh, is actually, um, Tagoro is uh, uh, currently giving these variations and these anomalies of uh, temperature and salinity, CO2 inputs, and pH values. But as Alba already said, uh, uh, oxygen, uh, anomalies in oxygen profiles are no longer observed. So uh, the decrease in this intensity and magnitude of volcano an anomalies offers an opportunity for the marine microbes to thrive. Um, yet what about the microbes? <laughs> um, Tagoro uh, is offering this opportunity to study the effects of, hydrotherm of such hydrothermal activity on, the f on marine microbes, uh, both in the benthic and the pelagic habitats, being this, this one, the later one, uh, the one we've, we have fo focused our study on. 
So in 2021, our research team developed an experimental approach in order to fill this gap of knowledge because of the difficulties of sampling and everything. We tried to, do, uh, to search for this answer in an with an experimental approach. So that led us to our experiment design. So in April and October 2021, uh, four onboard experiments were conducted uh, in the Angeles Alvarino cruise I, vessel. Um, and, the, and the main goal was to assess uh, how these Tagoro derived nutrients were affecting the phytoplankton and bacterial communities from a local source. Um, for this purpose, we collected uh, seawater samples from 127 meters below using a rosette in two different locations. One, in, one located in the Tagoro volcano, when a high, it, it was with a vertical hydrographic uh, station, so we deployed our uh, Rosetta and we sampled the Tagoro volcano and then in another uh, occasion we sampled this sti sti station uh, outside the affection of the Tagoro which serves us as a reference. So, uh, the volcano treatments consisted in five liters of the reference seawater mixed with a percentage of a proportion range from 2% to 16% of filtered seawater from the volcano. Uh, it was essential that this treatment water was filtered, was pre-filtered, uh, in order to, assess, to be sure that we were assessing the response of a marine microbial community that uh, was not subject of the that wasn't been subject of the volcano before. So our initial community in our experiments will be the one that comes from the reference station. And control, uh, controls were always run uh, in parallel and consisted in five liters of this reference water, but also they were mixed with a 16%, the maximum proportion that we have in our experiments, of filter reference water. So this dilution of uh, Tagoros volcano in reference water in different proportions led us, led us to non-significant uh, additions of phosphate. Instead, we see that the amount of silicates that we were adding to our treated, to our treated incubations was higher than the ones in the control and that were enhancing as the proportions of, of volcano were added. And once again, nitrate plus nitrate um, concentrations uh, were similar between the, the treated uh, bottles and the control bottles. So you would be wondering why we chose uh, these nutrient concentrations and the answer lies in the silicate. Um, well, as Alba already explained, um, the silicate concentrations has been recently found as a mixing tracer of hydrothermal activity in the area. Indeed, Alba, in its her in her first chapter of the of her doctoral thesis, uh, showed a linear relationship between these sil silicate concentrations in the area around the, ta the Tauro volcano and the temperatures of those waters influenced by the by the volcano. So that's why our, uh, ex our treatment strategy was, fo was focused on the main concentrations of silicate, concentration, of silicate concentrations. And in this case, in the uh, anomalies of silicate concentrations that has been studied for uh, and has been monitored in an intense uh, episode of seven years. So uh, we have seen that uh, the anomalies of silicate concentrations in our experiments are below the two micromolar, micromol kilograms per, silo, per seawater. So this, if we see this uh, map that Alba uh, had in his uh, first article, uh, represents that we are no, uh, on, not only studying the affection of these um, organisms that may be living uh, near, close to the principal sources of hydrothermal uh, activity of the Tagore volcano, but also those ones surrounding these main sources and which di uh, a strong dilu dilution occurs.
So our experiments lasted uh, between 8 to 10 days and in order to reach natural conditions we covered the bottles with a neutral density two layer lid and also the um, incubators were connected to a surface um, to a continuous flow of surface seawater. So I will show some preliminary results. Um, okay, so here we have the phytoplankton biomass uh, understood as, well, because we are using the chlorophyll A concentrations as a proxy. And uh, we can see uh, all the evolution during the whole duration of our incubations. Remember that we have four of them to replicate per cruise. And uh, the first thing that it's easy to see is that uh, those, uh, the phytoplankton bi biomass in those treated uh, bottles is responding, is in increasing faster and stronger than those in the control. So here we have a first positive response of our marine microbial community to these new inputs of nutrients by the Tower Volcano. I, sorry, okay. Uh, using this exponential phase, the one that I, I just mentioned, that it occurs maybe until the five to seven first days of the incubations, uh, we can uh, calculate the apparent growth uh, rates of this phytoplankton. And once again, we saw here that all our experiments were responding positively to these new inputs of nutrients. So. We have uh, so, uh, so far uh, we saw that phytoplankton biomass and phytoplankton growth were responding uh, positively. So we try to answer who. Who is the one responsible of this positive uh, in, in interaction between the, the volcano tower and, and the surrounding borders? So while we're waiting for the molecular results, uh, the flow cytometry uh, pointed out to two uh, specific populations that indeed are the major contributors of the small portion of the phytoplankton size fraction, which is called the picophytoplankton. Those populations are first the picocaryotes. I will explain everything that's happening in the same populations, uh, the picocaryotes and then the cynecococcus, but because the patterns are the same. So here we have uh, these picocaryotes that, sorry, okay, that if we look closely, I, I know that it's very difficult to see <laughs> here, but they are following a nearly similar pattern than our previous, uh, our previous results in phytoplankton biomass. And also, there's something that we can see here, that in the last stages of our experiments, the abundance, the cell abundance of these populations decrease. Okay, so now the same with Synecococcus, but these are more, uh, are more abundant than the picocaryotes, but uh, it's happening, well, kind of the same. Uh, they also start to rise till the five, seven days of, of our experiments, and then below to decrease, uh, start to decrease, sorry. Okay, and here we have another cyanobacteria population that we can uh, measure with flow cytometry, the Prochlorococcus species, and we saw that there is no linear relationship between our treatments, our volcano additions, uh, compared with the control. So they were not affected by these additions. And lastly, we have the teratrophic bacteria, which we saw that, uh, it, again, it seems that uh, they are not uh, responding to these new nutrient additions, but uh, if you look closely, they start to rise at the same time that phytoplankton biomass, the one that I showed you before, uh, start to decrease. So we kind of hypothes hypothesize the same that happens in natural conditions and other fertilization experiments, that in these last stages of, the, of, the, of our incubations, heterotrophic bacteria started to, to thrive from, from organic material uh, sources that could be this uh, decrease in, in biomass of phytoplankton. So, so far, without the molecular analysis, uh, we have, su we have uh, suspected that the world's nutrients are entering to the microbial food chain by the phycophytoplankton size fraction. 
However, we suspect that um, with uh, grazing or the detritus, this is gonna be upper to the okay uh, upper to the higher trophic levels or, or, or lower trophic levels. So. So far we have uh, very good prospects. We hope that with the molecular data we can study uh, more closely the community structure and also the changes in, in diversity and hope that we can have a first draft for the, for the end of the year. And I would like to close by saying that this work couldn't be possible with a team of scientists, uh, technicians, students that are involved in all the Vulcana cruises and all the Vulcana project. So thank you a lot, all of them. And nothing else, if you have any questions. Now it's time for, for questions. Thank you so much, Claudia. Very interesting. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your presentation. Those were some very nice slides, in my opinion. Um, you On one of the last slides, you mentioned the decline in the population by the end of the experiment. What's the reason for that? Uh, decline? Sorry, can you repeat? That the population went down again? What's the reason for that? In yeah. the last phase of Which the experiment. Which one? The, the heterotrophic eye, the... Um, yeah. The Sinecococcus, for example. Yeah, exactly. You one. mentioned that they go down again? Yeah, probably there's a top-down control. I don't know if you, you know about that. Okay, so big racers are like uh, keeping in check <laughs> the, <laughs> the marine microbes that maybe have a least, um, like, I don't know how to say that. Like they are... Um, okay, what is Worse, I said, worse competitors for nutrients, um, probably they have less size, so there's multiple reasons for that, but probably it's because of the interactions of microbial communities. Okay, thank you. More questions? No? No in the chat? <laughs> worry, that, that, I just wanted to say, Claudia, that you have already done a really great job. I really enjoyed your uh, your presentation. It was uh, really nice to, to to hear you and to see this fantastic result. That I think that is are really really interesting, and I looking forward to uh, to see publish your your paper. So thank you for thank you so much for uh, for the presentation. Thank you.